Mary as a first responder with Dominic de Souza. How can we see Mary as a first responder? We describe a faith first responder as someone who is present to others on their terms, who brings them the help and the information they need. A first responder accompanies someone in their pain on their journey uh, and as they need it. Each May, we celebrate Mary in a special way. She is the perfect May queen, the bearer of life himself, but her life is marked by many messages. We'll focus on three, her receptivity, her activity, and her love. We see this in the moments of the Annunciation, the Visitation, and the Crowning in Heaven. Mary is the perfect first responder. Uh, when speaking to the bishops of Brazil while in Rio de Janeiro for World Youth Day in 2013, Pope Francis said this, We need a church capable of walking at people's side, of doing more than simply listening to them. A church that accompanies them on their journey, a church able to make sense of the night contained in the flight of so many of our brothers and sisters from Jerusalem. A church that realizes that the reasons why people leave also contain reasons why they can eventually return. But we need to know how to interpret with courage the larger picture. Jesus warmed the hearts of the disciples of Emmaus. This is not something many of us have patience for. Um, it's very difficult to be present to others when, when you know, we're usually not even present to ourselves. We're often filled with ideas of who we should be, carrying all kinds of baggage and bias from loved ones and past experiences. Just ask my wife about me sometime. <clears throat> Our inner room is often an abandoned space, the place where God sits and waits for us, calling out to us through moments in daily life. That place is where Mary, Queen of the May, first heard the Annunciation. She'd grown up in the temple, weaving the great cloth barrier for the Holy of Holies. She was perfectly humble. This means she didn't have delusions of her identity. She didn't blindly carry the broken assumptions of other hurt people. She decided where she needed to place her genius, her gifts, and her time, and then she focused on that. Her humility is a path for us all. It's a path we all have to walk on our own. And God respects the time that we feel we have to take. He sure wishes we were faster, but he understands why. This humility is what is needed to be able to hear God's voice. And once she heard the invite, she responded immediately. She didn't know how all the details would work, but she accepted with the faith of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let your will be done unto me. Out of all humanity, she responded first with her enthusiastic yes. She accepted Christ as a living presence within her being before the rest of us did. She responded first. And then what did she do? She didn't flee into the desert to, to meditate on this wonder. She didn't bang down the doors of the Roman Imperial Palace, demanding the honor and the glory due to the handmaid of the Lord. No, she hurried into the hill country to help her troubled pregnant cousin. Mary stayed for several months with Elizabeth, helped within the house and the family to bring John the Baptist to term, and when it was over, she then returned to her life with Joseph. She was a first responder to her sphere of influence, family and friends. And it seems that this little battered family wasn't to enjoy a moment's peace. They were harried by an edict and they fled to Egypt as refugees and then they set up shop in Galilee. What's interesting or maybe prophetic about Galilee is that it was home to a mix of races and peoples. Jews who hoped for a racially pure home country struggled that anything good could come from Nazareth. Why would Christ spend so much time in the mosaic of Greeks and Syrians and Samaritans and interbreeds? Today we understand with joy why God would lead the Holy Family to set up home and shop there. 
that is the world that we live in today, with shifting borders and reimagined neighborhoods, emerging cultures and trends and needs and, and meteoric change. If Mary continued the rest of her life the way she began it, we can continue to imagine her charism for receptivity to God's action and an instant desire to respond to needs around her. This is why I love to meditate on the joyful mysteries and the life message that the mystics and saints have passed on to us in the traditions of the rosary. Like Mary, we all reach moments in our lives where we're called to make a choice. It's not always clear or comfortable but if we're acting out of deep love, then we know that any suffering is worth it. But notice how the second mystery has Mary immediately serve her fellow sister. It's such an important point that the first mystery is not followed by the third. Mary doesn't go from Annunciation to the Nativity. Many of us, especially myself, we get so frustrated when we respond to a call from God. I fuss and fidget that the long-awaited nativity hasn't yet arrived. That's not the way things work. You see, our hearts start out just big enough to love ourselves. It's supposed to get bigger as we do and be able to love our families. And as we get older, it's supposed to keep growing. It's supposed to get wiser and bigger and finally big enough to pulse in tune with the love of the sacred heart of Jesus. But things happen. Life happens. Suffering happens. That beautiful, soft, passionate organ breaks and it mends, but it's often afraid to love as, as deeply. Anyone who's broken their heart knows that the love that follows can be wiser and broader. A seed has to split its husk to push out tendrils into the earth and, and flower into a tree. God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. And the way he equips us is to give us opportunities to broaden our hearts. And only when that heart is broad enough can the Christ child be born in us. To quote John chapter 14 verse 23, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. This is the path that Mary trailblazed for us. No one in the history of humanity had ever been called to open their inner being to the power and magnificence of God himself. She said yes first. And with this seed of life itself quietly weaving royal robes of flesh together within her body, from her body, she turned to serve her neighbors and friends and family. Following her life, we can see how God stepped out of her being and into the world, but didn't leave her behind. He kept calling her immaculate heart to keep giving and growing and getting bigger. And she kept saying yes. I suppose that beautiful heart was utterly shattered on the rocks of Calvary and then was renewed with the resurrection. There is a reason why she is central in the paintings of Pentecost. As mother of the church, the Holy Spirit emerges through her heart, her yes, into the thunderstruck open hearts of the apostles. Today, she does not exist as a single being in heaven, far away from us like a distant star. She reigns as queen, mother, virgin, and bride. Her heart has such a vast capacity for love that she mothers every single living being. She reveals Christ to us and presents us to him. To our joy, she can't leave us as we are. She consistently breaks into the matter and light of our world as apparitions, reminding us that we're walking through more than the valley of the shadow of death. The kingdom of heaven runs through everything. Like the angels, she is a first responder from heaven to us, bringing us hope and messages like medicine and reminders of home. Mary may have been an exemplary theologian, 
If some of the mystics are right, she never stopped learning and conversing with angels. But the path that she chose to live out in the world is one of silence, accompaniment, patience, presence, and an unfailing devotion to the face of Christ hidden in people around her. So to sum up, one, pray for the intuition and imagination to hear God's call. We must want to love God above all things. When the path gets a little clearer, then we make better choices. Two, be who you were called to be. This is the journey of your life, so we must live with a great enduring kindness to ourselves. We must love ourselves. And three, be present to others. Everyone is walking a difficult journey. We must love them with the same freedom that God loves us. God grants us life and breath and sunlight and an open, merciful heart. The closer we get to him, the clearer are his demands and expectations of us. This triad of love is how we live out Mark chapter 12, verse 30. It is the deep law of creation. This is the vocation of humanity, the way our Holy Father Pope Francis keeps challenging us. Be a first responder. Know your stuff. Be honest when you don't. Most of all, be the loving hands, the living witness of Christ wherever you are. Mary is the perfect example of a receptive, active, loving first responder.